I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it says it's recording in progress. So we'll hopefully, hopefully that, hopefully it's going to do it this week. Hopefully that's it. Great to see you all. Great to have you all. Uh, Amanda, great to have you here. Schwartz Professional Services, providing uh, health, uh, wellness, and holistic uh, practitioners, practice management. Cool, cool. Very good. Always, uh, Joe and I are always happy to see as many as you, of you as you can that you come on camera. We're really looking forward to a great conversation today about something that I think is familiar with everybody in the room. And that is the topic uh, around the water cooler at every company, I think. And that is the topic of artificial intelligence. So with that, I am going to kick off the meeting here today or the, or the show here today with a quick poll. Oh, we're getting a few people coming in the room. Maybe I'll hold for just a second. We're going to do a quick poll on how you feel, how the room feels about AI. So I'm going to go ahead and kick that off here real quick. Um, I'm going to launch this poll, give everybody a quick chance to answer the poll. That would be really, really cool. It should be, in theory, should be popping up on your screen. Uh, you've got a few options there on what you can pick uh, for how you how are you feeling or what's going on, how you feel about AI. And we'll give everybody a minute to uh, answer uh, to answer the poll and we're it looks like we're letting in a couple more people too joe which is great yeah we it seems like it's always like one to three minutes yep yeah everybody hops in yeah. in the first three minutes for sure yeah. so uh, yeah. for those of you just joining us i hope the poll is going to pop up on your screen because i'd really love for you to answer this question uh that, that we've got going on here which is how do you feel about ai um, looks like we've got 13 so far, 15. I'm not sure. Hopefully the people that just came in are actually able to see it. May not be able to. So um, with that, well, let's, I'll just kind of look at the room here. What we've got here is looks like most people feel good about it. It's the way of the future and we got to embrace it. So y'all must be entrepreneurs and business owners because you, <laughs> you, 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 you just realize the reality of what's going on. We've got some people that feel okay about it. Uh, at least five people said they feel kind of okay about it. And then we got uh, a couple people that are just neutral. Um, for it doesn't look like we have any of anybody in the room that's decided that they're afraid of it, or or they're afraid of the future because of it. So that that's that's really really good. That gives us a good sense of what the room is. Um, you know that we we are as entrepreneurs. I think all of us are. Um, I'll go ahead and share these results. Hopefully that, I don't know if that shows up for you guys or how that works, but uh, you guys can see those results there and then I'll stop sharing. Um, so yeah, basically AI, We I think most of us as business owners, as, um, as entrepreneurs, we've sort of come, I think, into the realization that AI is going to be a part of our business in some way, shape or form. And I will tell you that personally at our companies, we decided last year, actually the beginning of the year, that we weren't going to do anything with it in the first year because we kind of wanted to let it figure itself out. Like, where was it going to land? How was it going to be useful? Um, what was, how was it going to be beneficial and stuff like that? So it's only just recently, hey, Christian, good to see, uh, Christian, good to see you there. I, have to, I think we were looking at the ceiling a little while ago, but that's all, it's all good. Um, uh, but uh, um, anyways, I, I got totally distracted. I shouldn't let myself do that. Um, you know, where we kind of got to the point now this year where we're going, okay, now what do we do? Now, how do we, how do we implement it? You know, what, what do we do without getting distracted? And, and where do we even start? I think that's the real challenge. And we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of that today. Um, I see Nicole in the chat. She said, absolutely. Uh, she, she, she looks like she's a big proponent of the AI. It's helping her save time and money in her business. Uh, Nicole, a little bit later, I'd like you to uh, talk, tell us, I would like you to tell all of us how it's doing that for you, because I think that that would be really beneficial. Um, so with that, uh, Joe, why don't you run us through the basics of AI and just kind of what do we got going on? What are you seeing? I know I'm starting to see little glimpses of AI on Alignable, um, but we know that all kinds of things are shifting to full AI. Um, so what, what are the, some of the basics and the key points on this? Um, you know, it, 
<clears throat> really what it is, I think if, if you're kind of unsure what it's going to do, people are like, it's going to steal your job. I don't think, I think the, the doom and gloom was probably similar to, to when the internet came out and it's going to steal everybody's job. It's going to be a while, I think, before it's like literally taking over jobs. It already has taken over some, I'm sure. But um, the one thing I think I've told everybody is like Alignable is implementing it in every facet of the business. It is not stealing anybody's job. It's really just making us more productive. It's the same as the computer. Your computer didn't steal a lot of people's jobs. It really just made you more productive, made you a little bit more um, powerful in terms of what you could contribute um, and productive. So, um, yeah, if anybody said kind of neutral, I would encourage you to think about it that way. Or if it's, it were, I know nobody said they were afraid yet, which is good. Like like Joseph said, we've got a lot of entrepreneurs, which is awesome. But uh, that's a, I would say that is one thing I would encourage you to think about it as, as like a personal product productivity machine. Um, it's really simple. AI, if you don't know what it is, if you kind of have like a very vague concept of it, AI is it's essentially a program that is creating sentences it's creating it, it's essentially understanding what the next word in the sentence is going to be and then filling that out and so if you ask it a question it'll it has a billion sentences that it's ever con billions and billions that it's ever consumed and it basically takes mathematical equations and creates what they assume to be uh, um, like helpful answers um, so it's very very it's it's relatively simple it basically is just as as close to emulating a human mind as it, as it possibly can get right now. Um, that's kind of the basics. It gets really complex. I would encourage you to look into it if you want to understand kind of the, the um, computer engineering behind it. I am not qualified to speak on that, but I'll tell you how people are using it, how people are using it in business today, especially, especially Alignable. That's kind of the thread that connects all of us. Um, so I'll tell you about how Alignable is using it. A couple of big things we're using it for, um, and this might be how you can apply it. A lot of these are engineering focused, but some of them aren't. Um, really two big things. We have a networking coach so that you can talk to the person, you can talk to this AI and say, what should I do today? And you basically have an individual coach telling you based on all of these parameters, based on what I know about your job, what I know about your activity on Alignable, here's what I suggest you do. Networking is a scary, difficult thing for a lot of people. So AI can help kind of predict. Yeah, there we go. I think Jamie put it in there, kind of an autocomplete. Crazy, crazy accurate, crazy intelligent autocomplete is kind of a way to look at it. So um, AI is helping people to network. It's a big thing. It's saying, here's what you should do. Here are a couple of things you should do. And what's crazy is it's creating links that we've never seen before, that we've never put together ourselves. And because we can do it, it's not just 30 people who are working as individual coaches. And then kind of cross collateralizing, collateralizing the um, data and putting it all together. AI is using it, and then it's using all of the data it's ever consumed and using it to get smarter instantaneously. So we've seen people make connections where it's like, "Hey, you are this type of business. Have you ever talked to a yoga studio? They typically need your type of service." And we've never made those connections before. Basically, what Alignable does is we try to connect you with people we think are gonna be valuable relationships. And we have to kind of hand map those on, on most of the time. Well, now AI is allowing us to make connections that we never thought would be possible before. Number two is um, it's allowing us to create messages. I know Joseph feels very strongly about this. People, I see this on Alignable all the time, especially with our sponsors and our advertisers. You have to be decent at communication, right? You're formulating a partnership with somebody. You're cultivating a relationship. You need to be a good communicator. A lot of people view other people sometimes on social media as transactions. And me and Joseph had a whole series about this. Um, and they just say the same thing. They copy and paste a pitch to 30 people a day. And then they say, well, that didn't work. Nobody responded. Of course it didn't. If you just walked up to somebody and just repeated 40 words to them, it never would help. So now AI is generating introductory messages between people so those are two ways alignable is using it and that's i think that's where it's the future where i can't create a custom message for every single person all the time ai is going to allow us to do that it also helps with us we have um with our advertisers we get tons of questions what do i do here what do i do there how can this help what is this we have ai generate response messages for us a lot of times we usually have to go back and edit them but 
Anyway, long-winded way to say that's just a couple ways we're using it. And that's kind of the basics of how I personally see it um, being advantageous for businesses. Joseph, I know you guys are getting onboarded right now. Are you ready to talk about that? Oh, or man, so close. You know, things take longer than I want to be, so I'm not going to get too out of the bag with that. But just to kind of following the show notes of kind of what we're talking about, you know what's cool, Joe, is like let's say uh, Amanda and I are meeting for the first time on Alignable. I can literally plug in like Amanda's profile from Alignable into chat GPT and say, hey, I want to I want to write a really nice personal – like greeting to Amanda so I could meet, so I could start a conversation with her and I could give it Amanda's information and it will give me like, and you guys, it's not that we can't do that ourselves. The point is efficiency, right? It's like, yes, I could sit for five minutes and type a really nice personal message to Amanda and it would be great. And, and we could get to know each other and we could start a conversation. But why not just say, hey, here's Amanda, chat GPT. This is her profile. This is her business. This is whatever information I have. Write me a nice introduction to her. And I can do that in 30 seconds. And, and, and it's a great way to start something, you know, at least to start something. And then we're having a conversation and we could just, you know, do a normal type of a conversation. But it's so, so, so time saving. And honestly, it does a good job. So I put a, I put a question in the chat. You know, what aspects of AI are you most inter interested in in using your business? And the reason why I'm asking that question to the audience today is because I want to at least try to point you guys in some directions today. Some of you may already be using it and it's like a part of your daily life. Some of you may not. In fact, why don't we go ahead and do our second poll real quick? And that's going to be um, how often are you actually using it in your business every day? So I'm launching that next poll. You guys should see it popping up. Uh, this will also help us guide the conversation today. Joe, the next segment, we're going to be kind of, while everyone's doing the poll, the next segment, uh, we're going to be talking about just like the good, right? Like some of the the real pros to, to realizing in our businesses that, we need to be thinking about AI, number one. Number two, we need to be figuring out what our plan is because here's one of the, here, there's two things that I've heard, Joe, recently. Number one, the first solepreneur billionaire is going to be created by, because they will have a, they will be complete, their entire company will be run in the back end by AI, but they will be a solepreneur. It'll be a, a single human being who creates something and 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 they'll they'll make a billion dollars off of it. And so that's the first thing. The second thing that I've heard is it's not the AI that's going to be replacing people. It's going to be the people who are using the AI that are going to replace the jobs. So in other words, Great. I'm just going to use, I'm going to pick on myself as an example. If I'm leading an AI in my industry, I will be replacing people's jobs, the people who aren't using it. Why? Because I'm more efficient, more effective. I can offer a better price. There are a whole bunch of things. And it's already becoming in my industry. I've already had clients saying, hey, Joseph, do you guys use AI for this? Because I want to I work with a company that uses AI for web design. I want to use a company that uses AI for marketing or what have you, right? So it's already becoming a customer expectation. So those are two just kind of interesting tidbits about AI. Thank you for everybody. It uh, looks like a, uh, the 20 of us did the poll, which is really, really cool. Um, I will go ahead and end the poll and share the results with you all. All right. So what did we get on the poll here? So a lot of us are not using it. No, we should be. I, I think I think a lot of us are really in that boat. And that looks like got the most votes. Uh, we've got some people that are using it daily. A couple of us are using it daily. Um, uh, there are a few people that aren't using it in their business, but they know they're using it personally. Um, so yeah, it looks like kind of a kind of a a, a segment, Joe, where uh, the poll results are almost even down the road. Like some of us are some of us are leading, some of us are in the middle of it. Some of us know we should be, but we don't know how. So thank you all for uh, participating in that poll. Um, so yep. we've got a good wide spectrum and we're going to have some of you guys share uh, during the show about what you're using and how you're using it. 
Um, so let's see. Uh, I'm just looking here real quick and what people are saying. There is a question in the chat. We'll get into that, Amanda. What platforms are people using besides chat GPT and Grammarly? So we'll definitely be talking about that. Um, you'd like to learn how to AI and reach more efficient reaching clients for your businesses. Yeah. Okay. No, great. There's going to be some answers for that today for sure. So getting into the good, Joe, uh, you want to talk yeah. about the two, the first two on our, our show notes there? Yeah. Um, efficiency and automation. There are, there's a lot of aspects of AI that you will need some technical um, acumen to really wield. I think efficiency is generally relegated to conversations. Generate three bullet points for this pitch column co coming up. Here's the data on the person. Here's how I'm wanting to, here's the angle I'm looking to have. Generate that for me. So it's really helping you. I think it's help you. It'll help you prepare. And um, I think it'll help you with overall presentations and then communication. So I think that's the biggest thing in, in terms of efficiency. Automation, um, it's, it's similar to what I, what I said. We can generate AI responses to specific questions. Um, now, there's still some automation work that needs to be done. So like you would need to then route a question to the AI to have it answer to then respond. Um, but it's very easy to just say, here are the top 10 questions I get from clients, pr prospective clients and partners. Um, can you answer them for me? Give me 150 words in this type of voice for answers. I, I, I don't seem to be able to answer them effectively. So that's one great way. Number two is driving innovation and product development. This is likely the biggest impact AI can have on small businesses. And it gets into number three is improving decision-making. So we're going to get there, but um, driving innovation and product development, I really, really want to talk about. We, like I said, at, in Alignable, we used to very carefully map who should partner with who, who should be a client of whom. Now it's AI is creating all new, um, all new connections for us. So it's, it's driving our Alignable as a platform, as a product forward very quickly. This can also work in terms of your clients. I know, I think Kevin, good to see you. I think me and Kevin met a couple months ago, but Kevin, I believe you're in marketing, you're a marketing agency, SEO, um, SEM, et cetera. One thing that AI, I've heard AI doing is making connections for clients. I have this kind of weird type of client. They're a business consultant. They're targeting mid-sized pharmacies that are regional. What keywords should I bid on? And so you're not no longer making those connections in your brain. Now AI is helping to generate a list of keywords to target in specific areas. Um, so I would say somebody asked a question. They were like, and I think this was also in the poll. I don't know how to use it yet. Or I don't know if it's actually going to help me. It's AI is like a computer. It absolutely will help every single human being on earth if you know how to use it. Here's another way we, we use it. I used it for clients. Make a list. If you're in, if you have a high ticket value, thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars. If you're a marketing agency like Joseph um, or Kevin, or or you have some type of high ticket um, off offering, make a list of your twenty to thirty most valuable clients. How much they paid you, what they paid for, how you met them, just all of the data points around the acquisition, the value pro you provided, and then how they enjoyed or how much they valued what you offered make a list of all those feed it into chat gpt and say here's my best clients what should i do to get 30 more of these mm -hmm. allow it to make that decision for you a yeah. lot of people we see are spinning wheels i don't know where to market next i think this is where i need to go i think this is the person i need to talk to i can tell you today every single person in this room can go feed that data into chat gpt and ask them. yeah yeah and i don't think driving innovation you know, a lot of us don't really realize how truly helpful and, and innovative it is. Um, like Joe was saying, you get those everyday questions in your business. And in a way, yeah, it has like, I'm just going to say this outright. You know, um, I'm going to see who am I going to, who am I going to pick on next here? Who's on camera? I like picking on people on camera because I like people on camera. Gene, you're next. I'm going to pick on you. So Gene used to call Joseph 
and pay Joseph for a professional marketing consultation. But guess what? Gene can now get that professional marketing consultation from just, just putting stuff into chat GPT. She can do exactly what you said, Joe, and get the information that she would normally get from someone like me. And then begin to go, well, th then the real question is, does Gene want to execute it, right? And then you, she could say, chat GPT, thanks for all these ideas. Now, how do I execute it? And it would tell her how to execute. Now, she has to decide whether she wants to do that or whether she wants to say, hey, Joseph, hey, I want you to execute. You know, I want you to do it. I want you to do it for us. Um, and, you know, but it's it's surprising, you know. And so so I mentioned just while you were talking, uh, there's some chat going on there in the chat, Joe. And what I mentioned, uh, because uh, well, who was it? Somebody said, well, is that changing your pricing on your web design? I said, absolutely. What what AI is doing to so many of us in our different industries is it's commoditizing what we do. So what we do is become commoditized. The service we provide or the customizations that we provide are like add-ons now, right? Well, but the website itself is just a commodity. It's just like, cool, yep, and it's done for you, and it's done quick. It's quick turnaround. It's low cost, and we move on to the next thing. And if you're like, hey, Joseph, can we add a cart? Okay, that's just an add-on. Boom, it's done. But it's all getting done for you. It's getting commoditized, you know? And so that's a lot of what's changed. Now we're, we got two, two more points. And by the way, you guys... Granted, Joe, Joe and I do spend time on show notes, but our show today, written by AI, okay? <laughs> and, and, and I'm just being honest. And what we do is we tweak it for what we're looking for, right? I tell it, hey, this is my audience. This is what I want to do. You know, so there's still some human input there. But the bottom line is, why am I going to spend an hour and a half or two hours writing show notes when I can get show notes in two minutes and then tweak it for what I want to do and for what Joe and I want to do in the show and move on with life. And so that's just an, a confession of, of, of me for today. This is my confession for the day, but also improved decision-making and enhanced customer experiences. Maybe I will give it. Yeah. Maybe um, it's decision-making. And I think these kind of go hand in hand, but um, I think there's this very obvious low hanging fruit you can use AI for. Super simple, super direct. Tell it exactly what you're going through. I do these kind of coaching calls where I'll hop on for 30 minutes. I listen to people say, yeah, I'm not, I haven't been growing my customer acquisition. I think like half a dozen people in here I've probably met with individually to just hear what is the wall that you've run into or what, how are you plateauing? What's going on? Tell me the details. Mm -hmm. And everything that people have told me, I then synthesize and kind of create a game plan. Or I say, here's your problem. Um, Fix that, work on that. Mm -hmm. Often, you don't need to meet with somebody like me for 30 minutes to an hour to do that. Tell GPT, I am a garage door repairman and I'm flatlining. I can't get any new clients. I kind of have my regulars, but I can't get any more clients. Here is where I've spent money on marketing. Here's how I do sales. Here's my competitive advantage. Here are Here's my list of customers I've used. How can I generate more? Why am I flatlining? Where are my gaps? You'll get a prescriptive, massive start. What I'm hoping, Joe, is what I'm hoping, Joe, is that it's going to recommend it to call me, right? To say, hey, well, call Joseph, recommend to call hey, both of us. Hey, hey, call Joseph and Joe from Elevate uh, on Alignable, and they'll help you out with this. Yeah. So, and I bring that up for a reason, Joe. Did you guys? AI is always learning, right? You guys, you guys, you know, you can teach it stuff. You know, um, let's see, uh, Kevin Bradley, where are you located? Can you throw in the chat where you're located? Did you guys know that you can educate chat GPT and that chat GPT will make recommendations um, based on the query, based on the the uh, inquiry? It's It's really, really quite interesting. Um, we'll go with Donna in Georgia. Donna's in Georgia. What does Donna do? I got to go back up and look what Donna did. Let's see. Donna in Georgia. First hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that was that cool hands-free urinal. Okay, right on. Donna. 
Did you know? Okay, and Kev, Kevin is in uh, Toronto, Ontario. Okay, Kevin, you know we'll go with you. Anyway, Kevin, uh, well, actually, no, we'll go with Yerno because I, I actually know what she does. So um, she can tell Chat GPT, hey, like this is the best thing since sliced bread for this particular industry in this area. Chat GPT will then begin to learn from that. I, my team and I have been telling Chat GPT for some time about this product. We've been educating it on our product. Hey, Chat GPT, did you know that my unlimited WP is the leading, you know, uh, website support, WordPress website support company in the US? And you can actually teach it this stuff and, and, and help enhance your experience and stuff like that. So that's why I said that, Joe, because I'd like it to be recommending us. And you can teach it to do that which is kind of interesting. Um, and, you know, Kevin can do the same thing. He could say, I'm Kevin and this is what I do and this is where I live and I'm the best at what I do in this area. And um, you could begin to teach it. And if you get friends and family to also be teaching it the same stuff, all of a sudden when someone looks for WordPress website support in chat GPT, by the way, I don't know if we're showing up yet automatically, but I think we're getting close. I think we're close to having it educated um, that it will recommend us as one of those, as one of those people to find for, for that kind of a thing. So kind of neat. Um, so improved decision-making, enhancing customer experiences, the way that it can be used to enhance your customer experiences is broad. I think someone mentioned earlier that, that it, they're using it right now to answer most of the questions that people ask in regards to their product. I think you mentioned that you have a software product and that you, that you're using AI to uh, answer all the questions that those customers are having and give them that really kind of nice customer experience. Um, we have something coming under the hood and some of you may have heard of it. It's, it's starting to hit the market now. We signed a partnership deal a couple of weeks back and we are going to be launching uh, uh, voice AI support for companies. Uh, so imagine, and, and we're actually gonna be using it ourselves, the AI is going to be answering our phone 24 seven for our company and be able to do that. It will be able to set appointments. It will be able to transfer it to our cell phones. If they want to talk to one of us, it will be able to answer basic questions. It will be able to provide quotes. It will be able to do all of that in such a human like fashion that they will not know the difference. So it's, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff. So enhancing your customer experience Anyone in here right now using it to enhance their customer experience? If you are, I'd love for you to raise your hand and, and tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Joe, I know you are. We're, we're starting to. We're in that middle middle phase. We're in the middle trying to, you know, getting it going. Anybody else using it right now to enhance customer experiences that would like to share? Okay. This one's hard. This one's hard because you have to have some engineering. I think Todd was asking, like, how can I get it to respond? to clients for sales via text. So you've yeah. got to have a lot of integrations going on. Basically a text, you'd probably have to use Twilio to send the text to ChatGPT, have ChatGPT chat generate a response, and then have Twilio send the text back. So that actually sounds like a pretty complicated integration. I will say uh, it's, ar it's already more, there though, Joe. Kind of there are already platforms out there that will do that. So that's, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about actually in just a little while here on the show. Um, we're going to talk about kind of the complication that we have because it's like, Joseph, who do we pick? What do we pick? How do we pick? And then how much time do I have to spend setting it up and getting it done and things like that? So um, probably some business opportunity for some of you there, for some of you serial entrepreneurs out there. But let's go ahead. So a couple more quick things we're going to talk about. Streamlining supply chains, pretty self-explanatory. Just for those of you in retail, streamlining your supply chains with AI. Again, like Joe was saying, AI uh, for Alignable is making matches and things that they would never have done as a human at a rate that they could never do. Same thing with supply chains. Um, fostering a competitive advantage. You guys, I think that this is really important. Point number six is really, really important. Fostering a competitive advantage using AI. And that kind of goes back to what I said earlier, that AI is not replacing us, but the people that are using it will be replacing some of us. And so using it for your competitive advantage. I am going to use this as a brief example because we're in the middle of 
launching the technology and launching the product. Imagine for a moment, you know, your salesperson or you sitting here today, you can only make X amount of phone. Let's say you can make 500 calls a week, right? You can pick up the phone a hundred times a day and call people, hopefully with an opportunity to, to um, create business. And it's the same across the board for everybody in your industry. Now, what if you had an AI agent that can call a thousand businesses a day for you and have a conversation with them, set appointments, send texts, and do that for you? Would that give you a competitive advantage? I would guess for most of you, you're going, heck yeah, it sure would. Oh yeah, I, I like this. You know, you do this now in Zoom and it should it should put my thumb up. Oh no, it's not working now. Doesn't want to do it now. Okay. But anyway, um, I get distracted, Joe, sometimes like a squirrel, get a squirrel in the room, you know, something like that. Anyway, so finding your competitive advantage in AI, I think is the critical component right now in where most of us are at with AI is where is your competitive advantage and how you can you lead in your industry using AI? You know, it's interesting. I was talking to a contractor the other day, uh, tree trimmer. Contractor, tree trimmer, that's what he does. And he says he can he uses AI now to look at the tree and trim it and then shows the customer, hey, this is what we're thinking about doing to your tree. Do you like this? Does this look good to you? And he also knows everything he's got to cut and it'll estimate how long it's going to take his team to cut it. He has a competitive advantage over the guy who can't even can't show the homeowner what the tree is going to look like when it's done. But he's using AI to do that. And guess what? He's closing a lot more tree jobs because guess what? The, the homeowner can see it. He knows exactly what it's going to cost him to trim that tree. So he can give him a proposal that's more accurate than ever because he knows how long it's going to take. So that's an example. And that's going on in every industry. And I think most of you guys know this. Most of you guys are aware of this. So Joe, we talked about some of the positive things. I think a lot of us have a positive attitude towards it. Um, what about some of the, the downsides to the AI? What are, what are some things that we can well, talk about? Well, you know, you mentioned one thing and I have already noticed this too. You mentioned one thing about a competitive advantage about having AI generate texts and calls. I am, um, I have a senior position at Alignable which means my title seems to generate a massive amount of spam. And I have noticed what I think to be AI outreach. And it is really bad. And it is 10 times worse in terms of volume than it was a year ago. So I think some of the bad is that some people who are doing thoughtful outreach, you know, if I'm reaching out to Kevin about advertising and me and him, you know, me and him have a good understanding. We might even know, you know, a couple of mutual friends. But I've got to send him a, a kind of a cold email basically saying, hey, you know, we'd love to meet. Sounds like we could be good friends. We could work together. Um, I might be drowned out by 100 AI generated emails that are cold going into your inbox. So I have seen that already where um, and I'd say specifically with cold email. I think cold email is getting massively overwhelmed with spam. And I think it's because people can now do it on a much larger scale yeah. um in a tenth of the time so i think it's degrading the channel uh the health of the channel and it's much harder for quality stuff to stand out because they, i now i have a blocker um on my email if i have not emailed you before you will go to basically a little catcher and it'll say hey these five new people were in your inbox do you want to look at any of them and usually i say no to all of them i don't even look at the email it just shows me these 12 people emailed you anybody look interesting nope i block it all um and it's a lot every single day yeah. so um i see that's kind of the bad is the overwhelm people not using it well or intelligent intelligently they just said i can generate twenty thousand messages i'm just going to send them out yeah not personalizing not not keeping not giving the ai that human input that it obviously needs a lot of the time um it's, that, that's one of the bad things i've seen it, it's, it's just you know, overwhelming you know, joe interestingly enough it's getting good at some of that stuff too as far as personalization things go however 
Um, I think there are some other things that are challenging for those of us in this room, business owners in general, is there is a lot of change, a lot of changes happening in the job market. There's a lot of shifting and everybody needs to be thinking about how am I going to continue to be relevant in my industry or in my space moving forward. Um, an example of this, I'll give you actually two examples that I'm personally aware of. Legal firm large legal firm, five partners, 10 paralegals. Well, guess what? They were able to let eight of their paralegals go because two paralegals can now do the work of 10 because of AI. Those paralegals are having to reinvent themselves. Um, another example is, I, uh, is, a, is a gentleman that I know that does sales training. And he had a back-end team of like six or seven people that create sales documents and develop sales documents and create plans for, for companies, for sales, right? He got rid of all but one of those people because one of those people can produce all of the needed documentation and marketing plans that it took seven of them to do previously. And that goes across industries. So we've got to think about how are we going to be relevant? How are we going to be different? How are we going to pivot? How are we going to change and lead? Um, I see that we do have some questions in here. So what about your use of AI and Google articles for social media, et cetera? I, you know what? I'm a proponent of it. And here's why. I was talking to my, I have, we have some full-time content writers on staff and I didn't feel like they were fully using chat GPT to the full ability. I said, Hey, watch this. You know, I said, give me, give me, you know, 10 great topics for, for, for springtime for plumbers to put on their blog. It kicks out 10 ideas. I said, now watch this. I want you to write all 10 of these blogs for me. And I want them to be 500 or more words. Boom. All 10 blogs written 500 or more words. Now I want you to make me a social media post for each of these blogs. And I want hashtags and emojis in the social media post. It kicks out all the social media posts for the blogs with hashtags and emojis. And it's done. Make your personal edits, publish it. Now, what has this done to the industry? You, we, all, we keep, we've always said content's king. The problem now is content's being produced at a rate of 100 times of wh what it used to be. So that content that you're creating Ow. needs to still be unique. So find a unique way to put it in your voice. I was showing our team, I said, now watch, I want you to do all of these articles in the voice of Donald Trump. And it kicked out all the blogs in the voice in the voice of Donald Trump. So you read it and you felt like Donald Trump was saying it, but you could do that. We did it with Iron Man too. So we said, hey, make this article sound like Iron Man was writing it, you know, from Marvel. And so there's ways to get creative and good with it. So content, it's just about creating content that people will really enjoy and you can do it with AI. I am going to tell you guys this, everything that we do online on Google or Bing or any social media is going to be 100% AI driven by the end of this year. Absolutely. 100% of what you do on Google is going to be, it's going to be all of it. There's going to be nothing done on Google at all that's not AI driven moving forward. And that's going to happen this year. So kind of interesting stuff. Um, let's see, we've got some comments here. One thing that we've recognized is that the need to manage what the AI was trained to do. Yeah, there's those ethical concerns that we think about with AI. You know, what? where are the borders? What? what what's being entered? And, and how, you know, I was telling you guys that you could teach it, right? Well, guess what? Humans are teaching it a lot of dumb things and a lot of things that are wrong. So believe it or not, chat, chat, chat GPT has actually gotten stupider than it was a year ago because people are feeding it bad information. So kind of an interesting downside to it as well. Um, let's see. Can you custom my AI's to yeah. your voice? Um, and I think David mentioned, so everything we're going to see is going to be average. I think that's the other thing. You know, it's, it's like I was talking about with spam. If you great, got an email, if you got an email in the early 90s, you could now send letters to 30,000 people. So you had the competitive advantage that you had the reach over anybody else just writing a letter. 
but yeah. you still had to do it well. And I think that's what that's going to be the difference when we talk about competitive advantage. And I think that's the point Joseph's trying to drive home is the bad parts of AI are brought on by people using it poorly and people using it because they're too lazy. You can use it to cut corners, basically, to be more efficient, but you still need to be smart, thoughtful, and conscientious about it. And I be think a, uh, that's really a, average, that's a danger. Right, 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 right Joe? Yeah. Right, Joe? I mean, be yeah. above average with it, right? So yeah. I, I, I taught my – I was so – Again, I, I like to really train my team, teach my team. I'm uh, I'm a very forward-thinking entrepreneur. I'm always trying to think of what's next and anticipate it. I was teaching my team last just last week to be above average with their use of AI so that it didn't sound like AI. And there's ways to do that so that it doesn't sound like AI. Um, I see uh, someone's mentioning that we use plugins that use chat GPT. Absolutely. Most companies are using chat GPT now in some way, shape, or form. We use it. You guys were in the WordPress space quite a bit. Our, our CTO is using it to develop custom code for uh, for our applications, for the stuff we do. Um, where you, you know what? We don't need a developer anymore to design that, that code that we need. We can tell chat GPT what it is that we need, or really Bard's a little bit better at it, and it'll give us what we need. Um uh, yeah, no worries, Kevin, on that. I hope you feel better. Uh, but now, you know what? You know what, Joe? We're we're almost 15 minutes till. I'd really like to open uh, the, the room for questions or comments. Uh, or uh, I'd love to hear how you're using it in your business. So anyone want to come on and, and either you got a question or a comment, or maybe you can share with us what you're doing or how you're using it in your business and how it's helped. Yeah, I think really uh, how you use it. Is it sounds like um, quite a few people were saying, like everybody knows what it can do. How are you currently using it, um, practically speaking? Uh, so yeah, please, would love to hear. And I'm sorry, I have to keep going on mute because I'm <sighs> coughing my <laughs> coughing my entire heart. No worries, no worries. Anyone, anyone got some comments or some thoughts that they wanted to bring? Yeah, Dave, Dave, why don't you uh, why don't you unmute and chat with us? Sure. Um, so I'm new to the group. First of all, thanks for letting me come in and listen. Uh, I think there's some very, you know, interesting points. Um, at Jack Trade, we're using it because we're a, a complete workflow system, all in one business that combines Shopify, Salesforce, field service management, inventory management, constant contact, all in one, without any data silos or anything like that. We're using AI to do two things in particular. One recommend next steps in your workflow process. So, you know, when when somebody sits down to use something and, you know, next is to build an invoice, well, we're, we're using recommendations and previous uh, patterns to say, hey, you probably want to add this to this invoice or last time somebody ordered this, they also, you know, added this. So if somebody's building an estimate to install a security system or something, we might help make recommendations for that estimate. Um, the other thing we're doing is we're using AI to read emails so that now when, when somebody sends us an email, we're able to take that email, take what's in that email, and then automatically generate workflow, you know, work tickets, orders, return emails, automate scheduling for people to show up at a place to perform a service and all of that so that now we're adding automations to what we've already built. So that now, basically, the, the the owner of the business is sort of just editing and managing as opposed to actually having to dispatch or make a schedule or, you know, tell a worker what to take to a certain place and give them a map. And all of that's been automated and, and generated. So um, we're using AI to speed up the process, but also kind of jump the the order ticket and, and all of that minutia that goes on around getting somebody to somewhere like delivering inventory and everything so that's what we're using it for uh in the in the future we're planning on taking away the keyboard so that people can just say hey can you do this and send an email here and mm -hmm. you know um and because we have those workflows already in place we we hope to make things less tedious we, we think that'll go a long way in removing the hesitancy of adopting new technology and new new um new processes love it thank you for sharing dave um sounds like you're in that upper you know where you've got that implementation done and you're really starting to experience the benefits of it so that's that's really really cool 
Um, Cheryl, you had you had a comment or a question. Um, first of all, I am new to this platform, and I really have learned. Oh, you you accidentally muted yourself there. Oh, I was yeah. saying I'm new to this platform, and I've learned quite a bit in just a small time period. So, I just want to thank my friend from Blanner, uh, Donna, for um, uh, inviting me to this. So I just logged into uh, Lineable and everything yesterday. And so I'm looking forward to learning more. And um, the question I had, I heard someone talking, so I'm not sure if um, I didn't really hear the answer. And that was, can I use my own voice when I am responding to people? Technology so is much. coming. The technology is coming. It's not quite there yet. There are also some, uh, right now in the voice industry, there are some uh, legal hurdles with the FCC about voice intimidation. They're worried about, for obvious reasons, implications for political things and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and so the FCC has been ruling on this and they're still really trying to figure out some things to do with that. The shorter answer, short answer is yes, the technology is coming where it will be your voice. However, what we're encouraging people to do is that these digital agents are so good that why not have your uh, virtual agent, you know, Amanda, calling people and saying, hey, Cheryl would really like to follow up with you. She'd like to meet with you still. Um, uh, you know, would you like to set an appointment with Cheryl tomorrow? Or, you know, and this is her availability. Um, I can get an appointment on the calendar for you with Cheryl or wh what have you, right? Like, we have all kinds of ways we're going to use it internally, but obviously we're also going to be, we decide this is going to be our thought leader space. This is going to be the space that we're going to, this is going to be our vertical moving forward, I guess you could say. Um, all of this, because there was a question here, you mentioned developers, what's going to change for graphic designers and web designers? Because this is my space, I can speak to it pretty well, Erica. All of this is being commoditized and it's going to be under the hood of what, what we're going to be doing on the top of it, you know, leading in the voice AI space and doing some of those other things. Um, because we've recognized that after 22 years in business, everything we do has changed in the course of one year. And so now we're now we're we're pivoting, we're having to change in that. So Cheryl, great question. Um, anybody else? Thoughts, comments, input. Steven, I saw you lift your physical hand there. And then Jose, you'll come next. Um, so Steven, what 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 are your thoughts? Oh, excuse me. We're in the early stages of implementing AI within a simple to use project management software for people that are not trained in project management. Mm. And we've been blown away by some of what it can already bring up. We have a combination of our own knowledge base of over 20 years of training in project management integrated with chat GPT-4. And uh, so what we're saying so far is amazing. But again, we're still playing in the early stages. And uh, it helps answer questions for folks from the Middle East overnight. <laughs> it's great. Sure. sure. Absolutely. I think a lot of us are in that stage, Stephen, where we're just like, okay, we're almost there, product development, we're, we're getting close, you know, we're getting ready to roll out. And um, I think that leads to that whole challenge question. It's like, what do I pick, Joseph and Joe? How do we do it? Where do we start? Here's what I would say. Two things. And then we'll get over to you, Jose. Uh, you'll be next. The first thing is, is make a list of the things that you hate doing in your business. That's the first step. The second step is, See if AI could do some of those things for you and get that stuff off of your plate. So those, those are the first two things when you're picking something. And you know what? There's becoming AI for everything. So if you're in a specific industry, look for your industry-specific AI provider that's going to have that for you. If you're a legal firm, look for that legal for that legal uh, AI. Yes, AI. I'm in a meeting. How can I help you? Oh, yeah, let me mute them real quick. Um. And 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 do that for legal firms. So find the one that fits your industry. That's that that's a that's a key there. So first, see if it can get rid of what you hate, and then replace that with AI. And then 
pick one task at a time and work on it. It's super overwhelming to go, well, it could do this. It could do that. It could do this. It could do that. So uh, Joe and I preach this all the time, like one task at, at a time and do it one, you know, one thing at a time. Um, I'm pretty sure Joe, by the way, was breaking that rule just a little bit, a little while ago. I saw him doing something else over there <laughs> on the computer screen. I just got to pick on you, Joe. I was asking GPT for a response to uh, somebody's uh, uh, question. Oh, gotcha. Got okay, good, up. good. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pick something and find something to fix that solution, train it, get it up and running, get it going and move <laughs> to the next thing. It is so overwhelming to go to get just lost in the weeds and picking stuff. So yeah, do that. Pick those things and do those things with AI and see how it works for you. Um, I think I already uh, answered your question, Eric. Note yeah, on that real quick. Um, we do something. Yeah. Sorry, um, uh, real quick on that note about picking one thing. We do something internally at Alignable where it's called it's called I scoring, I C E, impact, confidence, and effort. And we put rate them out of five. Is this going to have a massive impact? Are we five out of five confident? And is it going to be how how effortless is it going to be? Is it going to be five out of five most effort possible, or is it one? It's going to be super easy. We actually score things based on that. Um, we do that all the time, and it kind of helps triage what we're going to work on next. That's how you've seen the networking coach that on on the Alignable platform. That was a product of that ICE scoring, especially internally, especially when you're looking at GPT, and you're probably in a lot of these types of calls. Um, impact, Gene. ICE is impact, confidence, effort. Um, when there's all of this to do, really try to score, say, here's my five, six ideas of what I want, I'm looking at, which one's going to have the biggest impact? How confident am I that it's going to have that impact? And then how much effort am I going to have to pay somebody to do this for me? Or is this something I could do in 30 minutes? It's one method for choosing lowest hanging fruit and, and getting the most, um, out of your time. So anyway, yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Um, I, I know somebody was next, but uh, I'm not sure. uh, yeah, Jose, Jose, are you still here? I think you are. Yeah, go for it, Jose. You're up. Oh, you know what? I, I cannot hear you. Sorry, Jose, I can't hear you. Joe, were you able to hear him? No, I can't hear him either. He went unmuted and then uh, Jose might check your Zoom settings there um, and see if you got the right mic picked. And then, uh, worst case scenario, you can throw it in the chat, Jose, and we can we can talk through it that way. And then it looks like somebody had their hand up. Yeah. Um, and I just lost her. Somebody had their hand D, up. D. D. Uh, D uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know your first name, but D. Uh, go ahead and go DJ. ahead. Got your hand up, DJ. You got your hand up. Yes, this is Donna. Hi, uh, Donna. Yes, uh, I'm the Pants reportable urinal lady. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two things I wanted to say. One thing, Chat GPT helped write a PR release for us and it got us a contract. Huh. And it go. also got us someone recognized at Alignable who um, we're talking back and forth to doing business with one of your DMEs. So we use it for their plugins. Um, it has really helped us a lot and I'm still learning. I learned a lot of stuff today. So I wanted to thank you all for having these classes and uh, keep on teaching us so we could keep learning how to use these uh, tools. Excellent. Love it. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for coming. That's great. And, That's and so I, cool. I love hearing that it got you some business. Um, uh, and, and, you know, and that's kind of a, that's a wonderful and sort of a, it has a great thing to it for her, for Donna because it got her some business. But that also means that somebody like me or a content writer, if we have any content writers in the room, didn't do that for her and didn't send it out for her. And so that's changed an industry entirely because now Donna can do that herself, which by the way, neither here nor there, but it does have an impact on the industry as a whole are on other industries. Um, so kudos for you, Donna. And of course, having a very unique product, you're probably the only one on Alignable. So you should, you'll probably do, probably do well on that. Any, uh, Jose, do you want to try again? He says one second. Yeah, still can't hear you, buddy. I'm sorry. But if you want to throw something in the chat, feel free to go for it. We'd love yeah, to hear go it. Yeah, go ahead. Put that in the chat. 
Uh, anybody else got thoughts, comments? Otherwise, we will. Uh, I'll wait, wait. Joe and I will hang around to see Jose's comment. Um, let me pull up what we've got coming up on Elevate, you guys, because we've got a lot of great stuff uh, coming up on Elevate. Uh, so let me tell you what what upcoming shows we have coming up here. So um, next week we've got Market Mavericks disrupting dis disruptive. Bah, I can't talk. Disruptive marketing strategies for 2024. So that'll be a great one to have you guys at. Please tell your friends. It'd be great to have you here. Joe and I are here every week at the same time, same bat channel. The next uh, show after that is going to be Lead Like a Legend. So cultivating entrepreneurial leadership. That'll that'll be a fun one too. That'll be awesome. Um, and then uh, we I haven't put in the next show title. So those are the next upcoming two shows. We hope you guys benefited and enjoyed today. Um, as always, Joe and I, you can look me up, Joseph Kibler on Alignable. You can obviously look up Joe, connect with Joe. He's happy to talk to you too. Uh, we're here to help you guys. We're here to have fun, uh, elevate, and hopefully bring value to the community. And yeah, hopefully hopefully it's good. Can I? How can I get a copy of the recording today? It is hopefully recording like it should be, Jose. I will send you a recording uh, I, I'll I'll post it on the event page as soon as it's done, and you'll be able to uh, rewatch this uh, if you'd like to, or share it with your friends. We just I feel like we should just not get the the recording recording out when it was on Alignable. We couldn't get it straight. I don't know what it no, is. Well, we last week it it's so weird. Last week it was, it was recording last week, and I have no recording, so it was really strange. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm confident it's recording right now and that we'll be able to send it out to you guys. Uh, thank you all for your participation. We love your participation. Uh, and for those of you on camera, we love that because we love seeing your faces. We hope we're not boring you to death because we try to make the show. <laughs> um, and and uh, with that, uh, have a great rest of the week. We hope you guys will share Elevate with your friends um, because we, we really want to grow this community. I would love to see... You know, 200 people joining us. I think about the energy we'd have in Elevate with 200 people in the room and the interaction and the fun. So, and Joe and I are working really hard to make the, the show more interactive, you know, doing some polls, doing some fun stuff. Well, we got some fun activities that'll be coming up, things like that too, that'll be fun in Elevate. So with that, you guys have a blessed rest of the week. Joe, any final words? Otherwise, I think we'll call it a show. Um, challenge. We did this last week. We and um, somebody dropped the ball who shall remain nameless. Oh, but geez. challenge is next week, bring someone. These are always cool when we've brought people who know each other. Um, would love to stimulate that you know, discussion, especially between people who kind of have tangential businesses. People can learn from each other. Um, we just I, we love the interactivity. That's why we're trying to, that's what Joseph's talking about. You know, some of the. the activities we're introducing over the next few weeks but please bring somebody yeah awesome. Nigel never showed up i invited nigel he didn't show up he also peed all, uh, well, all hey at least happened. you invited somebody i i, I, I got was over one i'm gonna put it on my weekly task list joe invite of course i do post regularly inviting people to elevate did any of yeah, you join yeah. today from one of my posts because then i could get credit I could get credit for inviting somebody without knowing it. Okay, I don't. I don't know. I don't think anybody. Nobody did. did. <laughs> oh wait, wait. Oh, Alyssa says yes in one of my posts. Oh, good. So Alyssa, Alyssa came because of one of my posts. So I did invite someone. Okay, to there you I go. Just you did brought it. somebody. I did bring somebody. Awesome. Cool. awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody. All Have right, a guys. great rest of the week. We appreciate you all. See you next week. Talk to you later. Got to jump for a call. All right. We'll see you guys.